democracy, for their love of their country. I do so on behalf of a bipartisan support in the Congress of the United States to help with those aspirations because the fight of Ukrainian people for democracy is a fight for democracy even beyond the borders of Ukraine, the fight against dictatorship and autocracy. We're very proud to be working with our president, President Biden, who has been a unifier, a unifier within NATO, a unifier in terms of uh, the U.S. government, and now a unifier with the Ukrainian people in so many ways. Uh, he announced this morning some expanded sanctions as well as some opportunities uh, to help meet the needs of the Ukrainian people. Uh, we have passed, as you know, a $13.6 billion legislation, uh, uh, appropriation, that is about humanitarian assistance, economic assistance, and military assistance. Uh, we want to do more. The President said he will be asking uh, Congress for more. We'll learn about that in the next day or so, to be taken up as soon as we can next week. We want to learn, though, from the distinguished ambassador, Shumha, from uh, Ukraine, as to what the priorities and needs are uh, so that we can be uh, on time, ahead of time, uh, for some of them in anticipation of some further needs. So again, uh, I, I just say that what Russia is doing in Ukraine is outside the circle of civilized human behavior. It's horrible. Words are almost inadequate to describe it, and that's why we're so privileged to have received the permission from the Ukrainian government to display their photographs and, and man public manifestations of the war, starting on April 28th, will be in the capital of the United States, in the hallowed halls of the capital of the United States. We will be demonstrating for a number of weeks uh, the photographs of what is happening in Ukraine, the impression. So it will be, again, another manifestation of our ongoing commitment, respect, just being in awe of the leadership of President Zelensky, uh, of President Shimha, and we welcome him to the capital. Mr. Prime Minister. Dear Madam Speaker, dear colleagues, it's a big honor to be here, 57th day of terrible war in my country, but we are fighting. We have and we feel great support from the United States, from personally from President Biden, from Madam Speaker. Uh, we have now four the main tasks, to have ammunition, to have sanctions, to have finances, and to have European perspectives for my country. We have all of this. We have supplying new technologies, ammunition. Uh, we have sanctions, we work together, we coordinate the sanctions should be very effective. We need secondary sanctions, we need six package of sanctions, and we work closely together. And we also need some finances to finance internally displaced persons, to, to finance our refugees all around the world, especially in European countries, but all around the world in all democratic countries. We need money for uh, mine cleaning activity because it's a terrible situation. More than uh, 120,000 square miles are under mining in my country, and we need, uh, again, develop this activity, which is not a uh, regular activity for a normal country in 21st century, but we need money, we need technologies, we need uh, support in this sphere. We also need support these people which are suffering on the territories where the big battles or near of which big battles are continuous because more than 10 million people are suffering because of there is no food, no water, no electricity or uh, water supplying. So we again support them and we have uh, support from our partners in this activity. And thank you, the United States, for its leadership position in this. Thank you personally to Madam Speaker for your leadership in uh, support of Ukraine and actually for your understanding which problems, which challenges we have in our country because of this terrible war and terrible crimes and atrocities which we have in my country, unfortunately, in, in the 21st century. So 
thank you to people of United States for grateful support of my country and we hope that we will win and all together because now the aims of Russia are to create next crises, an energy crisis, we go through this in the winter time, now they create migration crisis, now their purpose and the aim is create food crisis in African, Asian and European countries. So I hope that the United States also will take leadership position in this uh, issue, in this direction, and will support Ukraine and all of the countries to stop and do not let Russians create next and next crises in the democratic countries on, all around the world. So thank you, and be honored for me to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister Shmihal. We will now go to a bipartisan meeting, leadership meeting uh, where we will again be inspired as well as informed uh, by the Prime Minister as to the priorities that we need to be addressing. Uh, our support has always been bipartisan. It will continue to be. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister.